Thank you for joining us today. Can you briefly introduce yourself and your company to viewers, please? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Ryan Browning, and uh, I'm the Chief Revenue Officer mm -hmm. for uh, Digital Asset. Yeah. I'm going to oversee uh, all of the all of the sales and, and customer-facing functions across the globe. Um, and Digital Asset provides a, a blockchain or distributed ledger technology mm -hmm. um, that which allows customers to build their own applications oh, cool. um, and and then synchronize those applications with with other blockchain based systems that are, that are using the same the same technology cool um, can you share your thoughts on the adoption of STOs by traditional financial institutions sure uh, we are seeing a lot of interest in um, in in tokenizing traditional mm -hmm. assets yeah. traditional securities or, or real world assets RWA uh, across the globe, and one of the key reasons um, that they're excited about it, obviously, there's efficiency and, and, and settlement mm -hmm. efficiency to be gained um, by by tokenizing these assets. Um, but what's really interesting is that that um, by they're they're using those assets to post collateral and and move that asset across different regions yeah. um, and removing a lot of the friction and the risk in the process as a result of being able to synchronize their oh. systems across cool. the globe. And then what unique solutions or technologies does your company offer to the STO market? Um, well, I think there are really kind of three key oh, areas yeah. uh, um, that that regulate regulated entities mm -hmm. um, are, are required to sh to demonstrate that they have the capabilities when it comes to the blockchain technology, and that's really the privacy of the data. Yeah. Ensure the privacy of the data. Um, show that you have control and control over the access. Mm -hmm. Who gets access to to um, any of the, any of the applications? Um, and then the third thing is really interoperability, making sure that we don't have. Um, you know, walled gardens or just mm -hmm. data silos yeah. uh, um, of different blockchains that don't speak to each other. Because mm. then you cannot have that type of mobility of those assets that, that cool. we discussed earlier. Cool. Then can you provide an example of a successful STO that your company has facilitated? Sure. Uh, uh, so I think if you, there, there's, um, we've worked with three of the largest CSDs in the world mm -hmm. uh, um, to um, do, demonstrate that they can tokenize they're um, in the U.S. in the United States, uh, U.S. Treasuries, uh, um, and then in the in the Europe, um, tokenizing euro bonds, mm -hmm. um, and in Hong Kong, t tokenizing Hong Kong bills and notes. Um, and the three okay. CSDs of uh, DS, uh, DTCC, mm -hmm. Euroclear, and HKMA, um, proved that they can can still maintain um, the legal and the regulatory hurdles of of tokenizing those assets. Mm -hmm. um, and now they're starting to prove out that they can pledge those assets in the different regions, which um, is very, very exciting in the marketplace. Cool. And is there any advice you'd give to companies or investors who are considering participating in STO industry in the future? Um, yeah, I guess the advice I would give for anybody that's thinking about building an application mm -hmm. for STO um, on blockchain, uh, the recommendation would be, you know, first, Define your business case. Right? Okay. How, how are you going to yeah. either increase the revenue mm -hmm. um, or remove risk out of the system, or potentially uh, um, realize costs, mm -hmm. cost savings? Um, and once you've defined that, then then your first phase, you should try to to build something within the first six to nine months, so you mm -hmm. can start start um, to realize value quickly. Oh. Uh, many of the projects I think, mm -hmm. tend to to um, increase in scope, and therefore mm -hmm. they don't deliver value quickly enough. So make sure that Make sure that you're doing that in an expeditious manner. Cool. And for very last question, um, what do you think about Korea's STO market at this stage? Yeah, uh, it's exciting. I'm a mm -hmm. little disappointed that the legislation has yeah. uh, um, has stalled, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely uh, you know, headed in the right direction. It's okay. the right conversations that are yeah. being had. Um, but you, you know, certainly hope that that um, that that can get worked out. But I also want to encourage people to understand that you don't need the regulation oh. in order to achieve this. Right? Okay. There, across the globe, none of the other markets they have really ever have released STO yeah. type type regulation. Okay. What they're doing is they're taking the existing processes mm. they, and automating them to re to remove the risk out of the life cycle. Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing your insights with us today. Thank yeah. you for your yeah, time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very